Hello. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, Hostis, can you please confirm you if you can hear me? Yes, Theodore, I can hear you okay. clearly. Perfect. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Connection Wednesday webinar. Uh, this is actually uh, our last webinar for this year. Uh, so we're really excited to give this, this last Connection Wednesday webinar. Uh, we have chosen some uh, very interesting things. We believe that you will find them very interesting, a very nice project and uh, some really nice examples from our help desk. Um, so this is, uh, as I mentioned, this is the last webinar for this year. We're going to do a small break and we're going to come back uh, at the new year uh, with a new series of Connection Wednesday webinars. So um, before I be before actually we begin the webinar, uh, let me just present you uh, Kostis. He's the support manager for Idea Statica UK. So he's going to show you the examples that we have prepared for today. Um, before we start the the presentation, uh, just a, very quickly, uh, I'm sure that uh, all of you are aware of the GoToWebinar software, but just uh, just in case you this is the first time you're using it. So you have a control panel on your right part of your screen. So in case you have any questions during the webinar, uh, feel free to input the, into that section uh, your question, and we will answer uh all the questions during the webinar and hopefully we will have some time at the end and we can uh continue answering any questions that uh, that you might send so uh let's go quickly through today's agenda so we have prepared uh, an example from a customer uh who has participated in a project in colombia it's a, it is a, a cement plant uh it is a quite big project and uh, it had a lot of uh, interesting connections. Uh, so this is the first part. The second part, as always, uh, is uh, a highlight for our, from our help desk. So today we have chosen to show you uh, something that has to do with singularities. And I will explain a, a little bit later what uh, this is uh, all about. And finally, of course, uh, hopefully we will have some time at the end and we can answer any questions you might have. Now let's go quickly through the project, just some basic information about this very interesting project. So this is a, a cement plant uh, in Colombia uh, for Eco Cementos. Uh, it, it is done by our customer AKM Beam Engineers. Uh, the client, uh, their client was actually OHL Industrial in Spain, a company in Spain. And uh, the project uh, was, uh, the location of the project is uh, in Colombia. Uh, so you can see the in this picture, you can see that it's quite a big project. And just to give you um, a feeling of uh, the size of that project, uh, these are the total connections that were um, analyzed. So more than 12,000 connections and more than 1,100 uh, 1, connection types, different connection types. And the total weight was 1,226 tons. So quite a big project. Um, so this is uh, the, the connection that we're going to show you today uh, is part of this structure. This is a long conveyor for cement in, in the production line, which is supported with uh, high towers over the storage building. Um, and uh, for stability reasons, the main frames on the supports had to be designed uh, as moment, as full moment. Uh, uh, frames. So the um, the supported frames were also based on this uh, port bearings, uh, as you can see in that picture. So we're going to uh, focus on this on this connection uh, on the port bearing. So initially, uh, this the, the contractor, in order to save some time and reach the deadlines, were was forced to to give the design straight to the manufacturers. Uh, so when AKM was involved and they did a review as, as reviewers of that project, uh, and when they actually reviewed this moment connections, they realized uh, that uh, the connections had a very low moment capacity. And uh, as we can see uh, in this picture here, this is the, the stiffness 
uh, analysis that uh, AKM uh, uh, has performed. As you can see, it is classified as a pin connection. So there was a, a big problem there because this connection had to be designed as a full moment connection. Now, um, AKM came up with this uh, design, this final design. Uh, and when the final port uh, bearing details were given, uh, web openings on the bottom of this uh, base beam were needed in order to uh, uh, for for the anchoring position. So as you can see the complexity uh, is 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 very interesting. And this is exactly the connection that we're going to show you today: how to model it and how to analyze it. So let's uh, go quickly into the live demo. So I will just uh, switch my uh, screen to Costis. Okay, so Costis, you have the the present the screen is. and uh, the Give me a minute. Um, Theodore, can you verify that you can see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay, so hello everyone from my side too. <clears throat> Today we will model the connection from AKM Beam Engineers. We will start from scratch and one thing that I would like to draw your attention to is uh, that uh, the connection, the initial connection was modeled in Tecla and was imported in Idea Statica. So uh, the initial connection had a huge number of, uh, of operations, but with the new version of Idea Statica, I will show you that you can model uh, uh, a version of this connection with a few operations. So let's move on. I have selected to model the connection from scratch. And I have also selected to use the American code and some default materials. So let's go and create the project. And let's start to add some members. First, I will add uh, a 14 by 109 W section. Let me rename it. Let me slightly rotate it. Then we will add the other member. Rename it. And since this is an exact copy of the previous one, I have two correct the rotations, have a look from the side, and now I can see that my members are there. Now I have to set, to set my second member as bearing, and we're ready to start adding some manufacturing operations. As a first step, I will extend member two by using the cut operation. And I will extend member two using member one and then add some slight offset. Now my member two is extended. Next, let's go and add an end plate. For this end plate, I will use 
NA325. Bolt grade. Um, I will increase the thickness of the end plate to 25 mils and then look from the top in order to define its geometry. I will define its geometry in relation to the connected member. So I will change my dimensions to be to profile. I will extend my end plate at the top and also at the bottom. Now that I have uh, the geometry of the end plate in place, I will go and set the positions of my bolts. I will add uh, the bottom rows. And then I will move uh, the right bolt column in order to be symmetric. The last step is uh, to modify the leg length of my weld. And my end plate is there. So let's have a look from the side. And as a next step, let's add a hunt to our member. I will use the widener manufacturing operation to add a hunt. So I'm adding the widener on member one. This will be related to the end plate. I will set a thickness of 12 mils. I will relate it to the web of member one and set it at the front. Then I will modify the geometry and I will set its shape to be triangular with a flange. So that it, so that <clears throat> It will be like a part of a member. So let's define the geometry of the flange. And there it is. I will have to define my weld leg length again. And I want to add a, a small cut at the Hunt web. So let's go at the editor. Let me add a chamfer operation with a value of 30 mils at corner numbered three. Let's apply the operation to verify that it's where we want it. And since this is okay, let's close the editor. The haunt is there, and I want to have another widener on the opposite side. Again, let's use another widener. Again, this will be on member one, related to the end plate. I will relate it to the web of member one, but this time at the rear. Uh, this widener will be chamfered. And next, we have to set its size. The widener is there. The next step is to add a cap plate on member two. For the cap plate, I will use a stock stiffening plate operation. I will set its thickness to 19. And uh, 
at this point, it's impossible to see the plate. So I switch my view to transparent. And then I will slightly rotate it and move it in place. Now, now let's add, uh, let's modify its geometry. And switch our view back to solid. Now I have to weld my cap plate to my member. So I will use a cut operation. And I will cut member two using my cap plate. I'm adding double fillet and I'm setting the weld length length again. Again, let's have a look from the side and our plate is there. Now let's move to the stiffeners. I want to add some stiffeners in relation to member one. So I will use the stiffeners operation. The stiffeners will be set on member two in relation to member one and the software is adding them exactly where we want them to be. I will modify their thickness to 19 mils. I will modify their welds to have a leg length of 5.7 mils. Now let's have a look from the side and let's add a slight offset from the bottom. Let's add 100 mils. Now that we have added this offset, I want to modify the shape of my stiffeners. So I'm using the editor again. And I'm using a chamfer of 115 mils on edge 5. Let's apply the operation. And let's have a look to see that all stiffeners are modified. Um, we want one additional stiffener. And we want to have uh, the stiffener positioned um, at the projection of the horns, of the horns flange. So let's add another stiffener, again on member two. We will set its thickness to 19 mils and its uh, weld length, length. And we will set its position to be in the projection of uh, the hunt. So there it is. Now let's go and create the stiffened holes. And to create the stiffened holes, I will create a new stiffening member. But let me switch my view again to transparent. But for this stiffening members, I will have to import their geometry from, uh, from a DXF file. So I will use a cold form general shape and I will add the center line representation using a DXF file. I will use the full arc DXF first. The software loads my DXF file. I'm setting its size to millimeters. Select the center line representation of my member select. Now I can see here that I'm importing this half circle and I'm pressing OK. 
the software approximates the, the arc. And then here I will set its thickness to 19 mils and I will ask the software to add zero additional rounding. Let's set a name to full arc and press OK. Now let's go and rotate this member and position it in place. Let me rotate it slightly and add some length. And the next step is to use this member to cut the beam web. So I will use a cut of plate operation. I will cut the web of member two using the stiffening member. I will use my, my, the surface as a cutting method. I will set my welds to be double fillet and their size to be 9.2 mils leg length. The next step is to weld the stiffening member to the flange of member two. Again, I will use a cut of plate operation And I will add, I will weld this, uh, this part of member as M1. To the bottom uh, flange of member two. I will set the weld to be a double fillet and its size to 9.2. I will copy this operation, but this time I will select this part and there it is. Last, I want to weld uh, my stiffening member to the stiffener. So I will add a new cut of plate operation. I will pick this stiffener here and I will cut by using the stiffening member surface. Sorry, the stiffening member surface. Again, set this to double fillet, 9.2 mils. I will do the same for the stiffener on the other side. So I'm copying this operation and changing the stiffener to this one. Now I have to add another stiffening uh, member to add one more opening. So again, I will create a new stiffening member. Uh, for this stiffening member, I will also add a representation of its uh, middle line. I will select another DXF I have prepared. Again, set the units to mils, select the arc, select OK. I see the approximation of the geometry is okay. Set the thickness and I don't want any additional rounding. So let's press OK. Now again let's move this member in place. 
First, let's rotate it by 90 degrees. I will mirror it and move it in place. Again, I will add an opening by using the cutoff plate operation. I will select the part I want to modify and then I will select the member and the cutting method. I will set the weld to be a double fillet of 9.2 mils. So there it is. Now I have to add the remaining welds. Again, using cut of plate operations. Let's select uh, the member part. We want to weld. Let's add a double fillet. Then I want to weld my member to this plate here. Again, I will use a cut of plate operation. Select the member part. And select the cutting plate. And I will have to change the surface, the cutting surface of the plate and add a double fillet of 9.2 mils. Now the last part is to weld my stiffeners on the stiffening member. Again using a cut, a cut of plate. I'm sorry. Let's delete this one. So Let's modify this plate here using the stiffening member and a surface cutting method. So let's play a little bit this value. Maybe I need to raise it a little bit. Let's move it a little bit to the, to the top. Let me have a look here. Uh, maybe I have to go and add So let's go and see what's going on here. Anyway, um, I have erroneously moved my member. Um, so this is it, the connection is here. And uh, now let's load it. Let's add a shear force at the top member and the moment. Um, 
Let's go and calculate the member. And we can see here uh, that, the, uh, that the connection solves just fine. And it passes the checks. Now, uh, the scope of this analysis was not just to analyze the connection, but to prove that it can be classified as a moment-resisting connection. So to do this, I have to go in my project and create a copy of this connection here. Let me add a suffix, st, to know that this is stiffness analysis. And here I will change my analysis type to stiffness. Now let's go back and let's set member one to be the analyzed one. So I will right click and set it to analyzed. Then I will click on the member and go here and add uh, the theoretical length of this member. It was 10 meters. And the last step is to go in my load effect and remove the shear load because we want to classify our uh, connection against moments. So let's go and calculate the stiffness. And since this takes some time, I'm going to my solved model to show you the result. So I have prepared here uh, st the stiffness analysis. Let's go with the checks and see the outcome of this calculation. And the outcome is the rotational stiffness of the connection. Here we can say that this connection is classified as rigid. And here we can say the stiffness diagram where, where um, we can say that the initial stiffness of the connection is really sharp, so it's classified as infinite. We can see the orange line, which is the upper limit uh, that defines rigid connections. And we can see a blue line, which is the lower limit uh, that defines pinned connections. Any connection that has an initial stiffness in between these two lines is classified as semi-rigid. And with this, I conclude this part of the presentation, and I'm giving uh, the presenter back to Theodore. Okay, thank you, Kostis. Um, just uh, give me back the, the screen as well. Okay. It's okay, so I hope that you can see my screen now. Uh, can you confirm if you can see my screen? Yes, Theodore, I can see your okay, screen. Perfect. All right. So uh, let's move to the second part, which is the, the help desk highlight. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to discuss about singularities and other warnings that you might get during a project. So just uh, very quickly, what is a singularity warning? So basically, this check has been implemented in uh, version 9. And uh, it provides information to the user for modeling problems that uh, that prevent the analysis of the connection. So in, in some cases where, for example, something is not really connected, uh, then when you try to run the analysis, you get a warning. As you can see in this picture here, um, the analysis is not run and it uh, says singularity. So uh, what does does this mean? This means that some part of a connection uh, can be either not connected or there is another problem with uh, maybe the, the, the connection between some elements or the meshing. 
Uh, so in, in this case, what the software does is that it provides you some information about where exactly do you have this singularity. So if you go to the tab, uh, to the analysis menu, and the analysis tab, uh, there you can see, for example, in this case, there is a singularity for uh, coming from a weld, uh, and it tells you exactly what, uh, which weld is that, so you can go to the model and see uh, how you can actually fix uh, this problem. So uh, in this case, it is, it is really easy to uh, identify the problem. This is something that we was not uh, able to, uh, the user was not able to do with previ previous versions. So with version nine now, it is really easy to identify uh, these, these issues. Um, so let me just uh, give back the presenter to Kostis, and he will uh, show you uh, three examples that we have chosen through our help desk that shows exactly this type of, uh, of problems and how to solve them. Okay. Okay, thank you, Theodore. Um, now, let's go to the first problem here. Uh, this is what the, the, a connection that the user created. So let's go and try to calculate this one. The software does some initial preparation. But we get a warning here <clears throat> that the analysis cannot run because of the singularity. Um, now let's go in the check tab. And here we can see at the status of finite element analysis that there is a non-conformity. So we have a singularity which is, uh, which, which is in a world and this world is found in member myth 3 to uh, plate sp6 so let's go back in the design and try to look and find member m3 you can do this by activating solid view you can activate the mem uh, the members and plate names sorry so we can see that this is SP6 and this is member M3. Now let's click on member SP6 and we can see that this is defined as a doubler plate on member M3 here. By defining this as a doubler and keeping the default welds here, let me zoom, zoom in a little bit, the software creates automatically three welds. If I change my view back to solid and have a look from the bottom, we can see that we have some overlapping welds from other operations. So what I can do is click on this weld that takes me back to SP6, deactivate the welds from this operation, and then manually add the welds that do not overlap. So let's create a weld operation. I will weld this plate here to this part of a member. Let me zoom out a little bit so that I can, uh, so that the indexes of the edges that will be welded are visible and here I have index two and three. So let's add this indices here. And we can see that the welds are created. So let's move back to our initial view. Press calculate.
and we can see that the connection solves just fine. Now let's go to our second example. So here we have a singularity problem. Now let's go and calculate it. Again, the software shows this message here that the analysis cannot be run because of a singularity. Now let's go back in the check and let's see uh, the warning from the solver. And now we can see that a particular member 1537 connected to member 1536 does not work. So let's switch to our solid view. Um, let's go back to the design and try to find out why. Um, so I can see here that my welds have some distance from the members. Now let's investigate this further. The user created some cuts here, but these cuts were created with a bounding box. Uh, we have, if we change the cutting method to surface, you will see that these welds follow uh, the surface of the cutting member. So let's fix all of them. And again, let's go and try to calculate again. Again, we have a singularity. So let's go at the check. And again, we can see that we have a problem with the world of 1557 and 1536. Again, let's go back at the design. And here, there are some problems. Now, let me change my view to my solid and although there are no problems once I will try to overcome this by very simple solution I will go in my gold setup and increase the division of surface for my uh, circular hollow sections to something like 70 Now let's go and calculate. And we can see that the solution proceeds just fine. And last we have this example here. This is a very common case where we try to calculate. Um, okay, <laughs> now I have erroneously changed the model type. The initial, uh, the initial problem was this. The user had this model type.
And with this model type that was allowing moment, uh, the solver was unable to converge. We can see an analysis of 0%. And the, this problem emerges when we have single bolt connections, like this one. In these cases where we have a single bolt, uh, allowing moment on the member just uh, creates a mechanism in the solver. So the solution in these cases is to not allow any moment, but only axial and shear forces. And as you have already seen, this can be uh, calculated. So with this, I conclude the presentation and I will return the presenter back uh, to Theodore to see if there are any questions. So Theodore. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we, I think we have uh, pretty much answered uh, all the questions that we had. Um, I don't see any new ones. Uh, so I guess that uh, because we, we have already passed uh, the time, I think we can conclude. Uh, so again, of course, as always, if you um, haven't uh, used uh, Idea Statica for, for any of you who haven't used it, uh, feel free to download our free trial uh, at ideastatica.com uh, and uh, you will be able to see also all these advantages that we, we have been showing through our webinars. Um, so from the Connection Wednesday team, uh, but also from everyone at Idea Statica, we want to thank you very much for following our webinars. Your participation and your very positive feedback has been really a, an inspiration for us to continue and improve. And of course, we want to wish you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See you all in 2019. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <clears throat>